Dr. Olua Toye Oluwani of the History and International Relations Department and I am the coordinator of GST 103, African Cultures, Peoples and Civilization. Um, this course is a very interesting one and it's about, just like I mentioned, about African cultures, peoples and civilization. It is modeled to introduce students outside humanities to the various faces and attributes, values and relevance of African cultures, peoples and civilization. Moreover, it calls for critical thinking of who we are, where we are and how we have arrived here. The essence is to bring to the fore of our students that without critical think thinking and juxtaposition of the past with the present, there can be no meaningful development of Africa's future, especially in science and technology. Um, in this context, students will have the opportunity to learn these topics in GST 103, which include, first, concepts of African culture and civilization. And um, with this topic, students will learn more about the meaning of African culture as well as civilization. Apart from learning the meanings of cultures and civilization, students also have the opportunity of um, gaining knowledge about the different examples of the different African countries and their cultures as well as how they have arrived um, there. Then second one, origins and early centers of African civilization. You know, this will also help our students to know the origins of African civilization. There is this popular saying that we cannot talk about African civilization without referring to Egypt. So you will know more about how Egypt has become the center, one of the centers of African civilization. Meanwhile, it's not just Egypt, we also have Miro, we have um, Sudan, we have Ethiopia. So you will have a broad view of how these centers you know, became the origins of African civilization. Then the third topic you'll be looking at in this course is indigenous political systems in pre-colonial Africa. Um, normally, um, when we're talking about um, political systems in pre-colonial Africa, they are totally different from what we see now. Um, in the past, you know, various African um, countries had various forms of political systems and you know, very unique political systems that suited their own cultures as well as their environment. And we're going to learn how these people you know, governed themselves before the emergence of the colonial rule of colonial masters. And in some areas, we had the acephalous system. In some area, we had centralization, or what we call a uh, centralized system. So you will learn a lot um, about these different political systems and how they actually helped in um, transforming Africa um, up until the time um, the white men came to Africa and totally changed the system. Then, number four, we're going to be looking at the Nigerian nation and the historical dynamics from the pre-colonial times. Um, after looking at the uh, at gen Africa generally, we will now narrow down to the situation in Nigeria. Nigeria also has its own history, you know. So we're going to be looking at how Nigeria moved from pre-colonial to colonial and now to post-colonial times. We also had our own political system during the pre-colonial era with the Obas in the, in the west, with the Obis in the east, and with the Emirs in the north. And how were these systems transformed with the emergence of colonial rule? You know, so we're going to learn all this. And from the um, colonial period, we saw various struggles by um, various nationalists. And um, at the end of the day, we had our own independence in 1960. So we're going to... Um, our lecturers will take you through the historical dynamics of the Nigerian nation as we've moved from the pre-colonial times up to this present moment. And then we'll move forward to look at colonial Africa and its imagined cultures. I said earlier on that um, um, all the African countries have their various unique cultures and which um, these cultures have actually helped to to um, transform the way African people think, the way they dress, the way they see things, and so on and so forth. But we we'll also realize that, like I mentioned earlier on too, that with the emergence of colonial rule, all these things change. So in this topic, we're going to be um, saying, or we're going to be looking at whether um, colonial rule actually changed 
the perception of African states, you know, that they had during the pre-colonial era or some of these cultures have remained. So um, I just want to tell you at this point that some of the cultures have remained with us, but most of them have changed. For example, this idea of um, ritual killings or the killings of twins, you know, all this changed during colonial era. But they have actually um, left some of our cultures and some of these cultures like the dressing, we still have our traditional attires, we still celebrate our cultural days, so some of these cultures still remain with us. So we want to look at these cultures, we also want to look at the cultures that have changed with colonial rule. Then we're going to be looking at another topic which is gender and African culture. There is um, something unique about gender in Africa, you know, and um, it's going to be an interesting topic for us to actually um, know and understand very well. You know, in Africa, we, 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 we hold, when you're talking about gender, it's not just about women, unlike what we have had in the past. Now, when we look at gender, we're looking at two people, we're looking at men and women, and how they are being perceived in the society. And um, in African culture, we had, in the pre-colonial era, we had ways of treating our men, we also had ways of treating our women. You know, it's so common in Africa that um, the man is always the head of the family. It's still very relevant in today's culture. And as I mentioned earlier on, that there are some cultures that still remain with us. But with the um, emergence of colonial rule, we saw some aspects of this um, gender perspective changing. And we saw some, you know, even uh, worse than uh, what we had in pre-colonial era. But most importantly, it would be interesting for us to see how men and women are related, you know, even um, in post-colonial rule. Then talking about indigenous health practices in Africa, which will be the seventh um, topic we're going to be looking at, we'll um, be looking at how, how um, our forefathers, you know, treated themselves in the past and how whether some of these aspects of indigenous health practices still remain with us today. Indigenously, you know, Africa uh, or African countries have various ways of healing sick people. For example, for a woman who wants to put to bed, you know, we have um, we have health workers, the women, you know, that, that will help in in um, in the process. Unlike what we have today, that the woman has to go to the hospital and be, uh, be attended to by nurses and doctors. But we have our own traditional doctors as well as our nurses too. And so many health practices. But what we're going to be looking at in this topic is whether these health practices have actually helped um, us in Africa to grow or these health practices have actually um, brought more woes to us. But we'll see the differences by the time we, um, we do this topic. Then, African family system in historical and contemporary times. Yes, just um, a following of, of the gender and African culture. We're also going to be looking at how um, African family system has evolved over time. You know, also from pre-colonial to contemporary times. We see... Um, Based on different cultures, we're not going to be seeing the same, um, the same system in the families. Not the way um, the Yoruba people treat their own family members is totally different from the way the Igbo, um, the Igbo family treats its own members. Likewise, the in the north. And you know, since we have various ethnic groups in other African societies, you know, we have different systems in which. Um, families, you know, treat themselves. So we're going to be looking at this unique system um, from pre-colonial to contemporary period. Then the ninth one is religion and culture in Africa. And when we're talking about religion and culture, Africa has a lot, a lot to this, you know, a lot of um, religious beliefs, you know, which have actually affected us for a very long time. And um, some aspects of this religion um, are really very important to us as Africa. But um, I have mentioned also in the past, look, when I talked about the colonial um, rule and um, African culture, we also saw the emergence of colonial rule, you know, removing some of these religious beliefs. 
So what is, what are these religious beliefs in Africa? And have these religious beliefs helped the culture in Africa? Or they have resulted in crises and conflicts? So we're going to be looking at these too. Then we'll look at another topic, that is the national movements and implications for African cultures. Um, during colonial rule in Africa, we saw some people, you know, coming up to um, to engage in serious um, discussions with colonial masters, you know, and they engaged in fierce struggle against colonial rule. They were not happy with what was happening. They were not happy with the way the colonial masters treated us in Africa, and they, you know, they stood up to fight for the for the freedom and independence, you know, of African. Um, countries. So what are these national movements? Who were the people that really made up this national movement? And what are the implications of this national movement for African cultures? We're going to be looking at their movements, um, the kinds of weaponry used by them, their various methods um, of, of their struggles and how, they, uh, how these struggles actually um, affected African cultures, whether they affected us positively or negatively. Then we're also going to be looking at effects of military rule on national development. And there is also this common saying about military rule, that military rule is always an aberration. Is this true or not? If military rule is an aberration, why is it that we've had a lot, a lot of military regimes in Africa? And what are the impacts you know, of military rule on the national development in Africa? Um, these so-called military regimes have they really helped in transforming Africa or they have brought uh, more conflicts and crises to Africa. For example, in Nigeria, we, we, we had the regimes of um, Yakubu Gowon, we had um, Bankida, we had Abacha, and so on and so forth. How, to what extent did these regimes actually transform Nigeria? Or, so we're going to be looking at this two. Then the last one we're going to be looking at is conflict resolution in Africa. Prior to, to, um, to independence, we had serious conflicts in Africa, but because um, African people had their own methods of resolving conflict, these conflicts were resolved amicably among themselves. Both inter-community inter, inter or intra-community uh, struggles but with some um, independence, we've had new forms of um, conflict, you know, sometimes known as internal wars, and um, within Africa, and these are conf or sometimes being referred to as civil wars, and these are um, conflicts that are waged, you know, within the same country, um, between the government and the groups in, in the countries. But um, we can't continue with conflict. You know, conflict destroys rather than um, rather than um, help in governance. So over time, we've also developed um, resolution techniques or resolution methods. You know, to help transform Africa positively. So what are the various forms of conflict resolution that we've had so far in Africa? So we're going to be looking at these techniques that we have evolved in order to address some of the crises we have in Africa. And looking at Nigeria as an example, we've had several conflicts like the religious crisis, ethno, eth ethno um, religious crisis, um, civil war, that is the major civil war we had between the Nigerian government and the Biafran government, you know, and a lot of these conflicts. And right now we are, we, are, we are looking at a major crisis in our hands that is talking about Boko Haram, you know, terrorist group in the uh, northeast, and that has actually brought about serious crisis and insecurity in Nigeria. So we're going to be looking at all these forms of conflicts in Africa, you know, briefly, and we've also studied how these conflicts have been resolved so far. But mind the way we are looking at this, we're also going to and juxtapose this with the traditional methods. Should we still continue? Because we realize that these so-called conflict resolution um, techniques are Western-based. They are the ones imported by, by the West. So um, are these um, methods of conflict, have they really helped in totally bringing peace to Africa? 
and um, how can we begin to you know introduce the traditional mechanisms you know to these so-called western um, techniques and you know to what extent will these two help in transforming Africa positively. So these are some of the topics, or these are all the topics that we're going to be um, discussing during the semester. I wish students a viewing of lecture view and visuals, um, focused attention to teaching, consistent class attendance, prompt submission of assignments, and at the same time, rigorous study of lecture notes. Um, but mind you, um, I'm not the only one in this. We have our other lecturers that will be teaching this course. These are able, intelligent, and um, very, very friendly lecturers. So if you have any problem, you can always meet them at the end of, or even discuss it during um, lecture hours or even after the class. Thank you and God bless.